Amen. Come on, Jesus. Are you guys excited for this new month? Come on. Ooh, that was weak sauce. Are y'all excited for this new month? Yes, my dudes. Amen. And we need to multiply that energy across. So good. We have a packed month ready for you. And honestly, it was, it was, a lot of it was not within our own planning. The Lord just set these set times. And we're just so excited. Just a little while ago, we got to meet with some precious young adults from the Chinese Pure Heart Ministry. They've changed their ministry name to Pure Heart. Isn't that amazing since the conference? And we just believe it's the Lord returning us to pursuing God with a pure heart. Got to meet with these um, three, four precious couples, and I'm just, I'm excited. I can't tell your neighbor, you don't want to miss this month. So do whatever you have to do. Put in your calendars, all these coming up events. It's going to be packed with breakthrough and the love of God. Being in the new month of February, I think it's important. Let me summarize. Unless if you've missed January, you missed a lot, right? The Lord has done a lot from the Pure Conference all of the way into the beginning of the new year. And it began with Mama Grace releasing a word. And that word was a return to being like what? Say nice and bold. Being being childlike. Out of Matthew 18, when the disciples were arguing who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom, Jesus stopped the argument, brought a child in their midst, and said, the one who could be like this one, sitting the child on his lap, this is the one who's the greatest in the kingdom. Can I get an amen, somebody? So 2024 is returning to be childlike, which is the heart of humility. And if you were with us the week after, I got to share with you guys the, the most beautiful packet, passage about being childlike is Psalm what? Who said it? Psalm 23. The theme of our conference was Psalm 24. We're going to ascend the hill of the Lord. We, the generation and the God of Jacob, we're going to go up. But before we go up, we need to learn how to be dependent. Can I get an amen, somebody? So that's why we have Psalm 23. It's the shepherd's psalm of learning. I can't do anything. I can't get up. I cannot move unless I'm with him. At the very center, remember, it's 55 Hebrew words. 26 words lead up to this one phrase and 26 words after. And it comes in the valley of the shadow of death. He says what? He is with me he is with me you are with me it's a declaration i cannot go whether i'm in valley low or mountain high there's nowhere i cannot go i need to know you are with me amen and it ends with the most beautiful phrase and some of you guys may have never learned it before but I really encourage you guys to go deep. Who's been following the Bible race? Show of hands. Yes. If you haven't, tell your neighbor, sign up now. It's never too late. If you don't give up, you win. If you've fallen off, just say yes again. The Bible race is an incredible it's a credible way as a, as a family we've been reading the word and going deep in the word. So much revelation. But Psalm 23 ends with a phrase, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me but remember that word follow me if you go back to the original hebrew it is say it nice and loud radoff in hebrew radoff which means to violently pursue tell your neighbor god's grace and mercy is violently pursuing you When you know his mercy and grace is after you, then you know it's not about your performance. Amen? It's not about me trying to measure up to these expectations that I can never reach. That's why Jesus came. He came. The law was required to show us that we can never measure up. Apart from him, we can't do a thing. Right? There's no one not one that is good. The whole law was purposed to show us we cannot do it on our own. Amen? 
So what does he do? He sends his love. He sends his grace. He sends his mercy to violently pursue us. And there's no other picture of his violent pursuit after our heart than the cross. Amen? What we've been singing. And last week, our beloved Papa Mong En, can I call him Papa now? Our father in our midst, he was here sharing with us the life of Joseph. Who's been gripped by the life of Joseph the last few weeks I've been studying? Like you've seen things. Like I've, I've known Joseph's life for a long time, but I feel like I have not known his life. You know what I mean? New revelations of the way that he walked with such humility before the Lord. He was willing to allow the circumstance of his life to cause him to go even lower. Whether his brothers tried to kill him, whether he was wrongly accused, whether he was forgotten, you don't get to hear his internal dialogue, but you see his response. And this response was a life surrendered. Can I get an amen, somebody? He showed us what a surrendered life could do. A surrendered life that was willing to even be used, not even just to go through the difficulties themselves, but even to challenge his brothers. In the moment when it could have been so easy, he could have just said, here I am, I'm alive, guys, I'm alive. He willingly trusted God to test his brothers out. Why? For what sake? For vengeance? No. For retribution? No. For love. Amen? He wanted to see his brothers mature into their destiny. So he tested them. He tested them, not because he wanted them to suffer, but he wanted them to see that the only one they could depend on is the Lord. Amen? Not, his, not their brother that came to a high position, but it was the Lord that, that sanctified and set apart his life, not only to save his family, but an entire nation. And now we're in the life of Moses. We're in the wilderness. And man, there's so much to learn in the wilderness. Can I get an amen, somebody? So I was asking the Lord today, what, what can I talk about? And the Lord spoke to me about the picture or the manifestation of a childlike heart. What does it look like? Beyond dependency and surrender, what does it look like? And there's two things. It's ears that can hear, and it's a teachable heart. Can you write that down? It's ears that can hear and a teachable heart. How do you know whether or not you have ears that can hear? I have this funny video that we're gonna play for a minute just because it's hilarious. Sometimes I think that like I'm still young and hip and then I watch these videos and I'm like, wow, I am very far from this generation's gap. There are things that they say I don't, I don't understand, but we will test ourselves. Let's see how much you can follow. Let's see our ears Book, that can hear. And it is stories from the Bible is told by Gen Z and it has me rolling. This is the book. I'm going to read you a story out of it. Transfiguration. So this is the story of Jesus and the transfiguration. Jesus took three of his besties up a mountain and he dropped the hardest reality at it and thought they wouldn't notice for he had a supernatural glow up and his face and clothes were divinely extra. When they saw this, it altered their brain chemistry. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah were vibing with Jesus, so Peter tried to match their energy and said, Hey, yo, y'all trying to chill or nah? Just then, a bright cloud entered the chat, and a voice came from it and said, This is my son. He's him. Let him cook. The three bros were low-key terrified, and Jesus yeeted his, glorif his glorified era. And Moses and Elijah skirted back to heaven. And as they gritted down the mountain, Jesus told them, gatekeep all these facts you have witnessed until the CEO of life glows back up. The three bros wondered what glowing back up meant and said, maybe it's the friends we made along the way for they still didn't understand the assignment. Anyway, this is the book. If you want to enjoy a fresh view on some of these Bible stories, it's hilarious. Amen. Okay, of those in the room who have ears to hear, who understood the assignment? Did you get it? I knew Zesty got it. Okay, who, who's the rest of us who are lost? 
show of hands. <laughs> totally lost. Mama Martina, we don't have to just learn English. We have to learn Gen Z language. It's a whole, it's a whole language. It's so different. I mean, yeah, I watched that and I was like, huh? <laughs> and then I gave it to the young ones. I think I showed like Faith and Hadassah. They're like, oh, like I get this. It was funny. They were vibing with it. Am I using vibe correctly? They were vibing with it and they understood it. Cause it's, I mean, it's their generation. They can hear this and understand, right? Sometimes it feels like the Lord is talking in Gen Z. Anyone feel that way? <laughs> Where he's speaking to us, but we don't fully, we can't fully grasp what he's saying. It's almost a language all of its own, the Holy Spirit, the way that he speaks. And I think not just the older generation and not just for the younger generation that seems to be in it. I think we all need new ears to hear. Can I get an amen, somebody? To, to understand the language of the way that he speaks and the way that he moves. We need ears that can hear. Let's take a look at Second Chronicles 26. This is about King Uzziah. Now, this was a king that began, he began so, so well. I'm going to have one of my dudes read. Can I have one of my dudes read? Joe, Joe, can you read for me? And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the in who instructed him in the fear of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Amen. So good. So King Uzziah, can you all agree, did he start well? He started pretty well. He had ears that could hear God. He would set himself to seek him, meaning he set his ears, he set his eyes, he set his gaze. He wanted to pursue God in all that God instructed him, and especially in, what, what does it say? The fear of? The fear of the Lord, meaning the fear of the Lord means I, I am so like intent, I wanna hear every word God speaking, and I wanna follow it completely and wholeheartedly. Can I get an amen, somebody? It's not this, oh God, you're too holy and I just wanna stay away from you. It's this, God, I'm leaning in. It's like I can imagine our ear pressed to the door of heaven. I gotta hear every word so that I could fully obey what you're doing. And this is how King Uzziah began. And as he began to live this way with ears that could hear what happened to his life, he prospered. He prospered. Everything King Uzziah touched turned to gold. The favor started falling on him because he was, it wasn't about him. It wasn't his ability. It was his ears that were tuned in to him. Amen? We're going to go to, we're going to fast forward a little bit in the chapter. We're going to go to verse 14 or 15. I'm going to have our awesome George. How many of you guys have been listening to the Bible race? If you've heard that nice, deep, powerful voice, that's our awesome George. In Jerusalem, he made machines invented by skilled men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones. And in his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, he grew proud to his destruction, for he was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. But Azariah the priest went in after him with 80 priests of the Lord who were men of valor. And they withstood the king Uzziah and said to him, it is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord before the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn the incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have done wrong, and, I, and it will bring you no honor from the Lord God. Amen. Then Uzziah was angry. Now he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And when he became angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead in the presence of the priests in the house of the Lord by the altar of incense. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they rushed him out quickly, and he himself hurried to go out, because the Lord had struck him. Amen. So we see that Uzziah, he started well. But the moment he stopped listening, and he started looking at, look what I have done. 
Look at my awesome inventions. He invented all these machinery to attack, to be powerful. And he started getting famous. He started getting notoriety. Go to the previous verse. He started to become proud and presumptuous in himself. See, the moment we lose the ears to hear, it's the moment pride comes in. Can I get an amen, somebody? When you lose the ability to hear, it's because pride is taking hold of your heart. It means I know better. I can trust in my skills and my, my abilities. I'm no longer dependent. I am independent. I can do this on my own. Any of you guys have said that to yourself? I can do this on my own. I don't need your help. I don't need your help. In that very moment, when he shut his heart off, that's when pride took hold. And his presumption led him to even believe, I can give an offering to God. I can do all these awesome things because I'm the gifted one. I can go up and do this sacrifice. And what happened when he went to bring the sacrifice? That very moment he stepped into presumption, he was cursed by God. Pride is a curse. Can I get an amen, somebody? It is a gift to be lowly, to be like a child, and to have ears to hear. You want to fight for that. Can I get an amen? especially when you start to get favor, when you start to get promotions in your job, when accolades start to come, people start to recognize your ability, that's the very moment you gotta get on your face, amen, and cry out to God. Because we know how Satan fell. He was the one who was supposed to champion all of heaven to bring a praise to God that was worthy. But what happened? He started to presume that the praise that he heard was for himself. And not only did he fall, but he took a third of the angels with him in that presumption. So when good things are happening to your life, how do you respond? How do you respond? When people start to acknowledge you are awesome, you are great, what is your response? Matthew and I got to watch this really powerful documentary I don't know if you guys have watched The Chosen. Show of hands. Woo! The Chosen. Come on. I remember when it was like thought impossible for it to happen. I think think it was the first ever crowdfunded like film initiative of its kind in human history. It's kind of crazy, right? Who would have thought a production about the life of Jesus? would take on the world. Now I know it's been translated to numerous languages, sent to countries all over the earth. And so it's pretty, it's pretty huge, right? And they're just about to release the next season. Matthew's like, let's go. They're gonna, they're gonna be playing the first, I think three or four episodes in, three episodes in theaters. So if you wanna come, let's go, we can go. Anyways, we watched the documentary and it's um, Jonathan and Jesus. Do you guys know who Jonathan is? Who's Jonathan? Not David's best friend. (laughs) Jonathan is the actor who plays Jesus. And it's a documentary of his process of now becoming, one, having to play like the most like craziest role of your life, right? As an actor. And forever he's gonna be known now Like, no matter what he does else in his life, he's going to be known as the man who played Jesus. And so it's kind of like a story of his life and the background of his life. And how how difficult it is. Can you imagine? The, The film crew followed him, and he'd just be walking, and then this woman would scream on the road. Like, he's just walking, like, Jesus! And, like, she just runs to him, and she is literally, this is on film, she's sobbing. She's sobbing. And she would share, like, you don't know how, like, you, by you playing Jesus, like, the Lord healed me, or, and so on and so forth. Like, this whole, happens to him every day. Like, no one sees Jonathan anymore. They only see Jesus. And can you imagine the amount of pressure that is? Like, it's, I, I, I would not want to play Jesus ever. Not that I, I look like him at all, but I would never want to because of the, the, the it's, it's a standard, right? Of, of a place, a pedestal, where 
what happens to people put on pedestals? They always fall. That's what they're made for. They're made for people to fall, not for people to stay. And so it's, it's his walk of like living in humility. It was really powerful. I think the most powerful point of that documentary, which I really encourage you guys to watch it with your family, it's really powerful. One of the moments was he talked about where he was before he became the man now known as Jesus across the earth. He was broke, like incredibly broke. He was $80 withdrawn over his bank account. And he had $20 to his name, just $20 in his pocket. And all he had was a little bit of food just for that one day. And he said he had spent, before he played the role of Jesus, he had spent over a decade in the wilderness. It was a decade of being a starving art actor. But really, he had this relationship with the Lord. the Lord. He felt like the Lord called him to being an actor. And so it's such a beautiful story. But he got to this place where he had nothing at all. And he didn't know how he was going to get through the next day. And then he prayed the most precious prayer. He said, God, I just trust you. I trust you and I surrender to you. I trust you. And he actually videotaped this, so it's really beautiful. you got to watch it. I don't think I could have gotten the clip. I don't know if Bryson could find it. I don't know. He, he pulls up a camera because the most crazy thing had happened. The night before, he said, God, I surrender. I just trust you. Like, I don't know how I'm going to eat tomorrow, but you've always provided manna from heaven. Amen? That very next day, he had four checks in the mail. Four checks. And then he videotaped it, and he's literally crying. He's so thankful. He opens the first one, and it was a $50 check. He was like, oh, my gosh, thank you, Lord. I had $20 in my pocket. Now I have $70. I'm so overdrawn, but I praise you. And he's just, he's like, this is crazy. This is crazy. God really does miracles. And he's just bawling. He opens the next check. It's another $50. He opens one more check and it's like $1,000. And he's just bawling, crying, crying. And you just see this heart of just thanksgiving. God, I'm so thankful. You really do. You care. Oh, even about the little things. I don't have to worry I just get to learn how to trust you. And three weeks later, later, this guy named Dallas calls him and says, do you want to come play Jesus? And then he gets the role of Jesus. Isn't that crazy? But he had to go through this process. And now I see him on this mountain, and I could see his heart is so humble. Some of my favorite people are in this documentary, too, like Francis Chan is on there. A couple of my other friends are on there. It's kind of crazy. I was like, wow. And so you just see, now he's at this mountain top, but no one knew the process of being in the valley, of cultivating a life surrendered in trust, surrendered to listen, surrendered to obey, especially in the difficulty. Can I get an amen, somebody? Mother Teresa was asked one time if, he could, if she could pray for this man. This man was some learned guy. Um, and he had been serving in the house of the dying. And Mother Teresa said, so how do you want me to pray for you? He said, I need clarity. Mother Teresa, could you pray for clarity? Do you know what her response was? She said, no. No. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard Mother Teresa say no, but she said, no, I'm not going to pray for clarity for you. You know what I'm going to pray for? I'm going to pray that you learn to trust. Can I get an amen, somebody? She said, I never asked the Lord for clarity, but one thing I do ask the Lord of daily is to trust him more. That's what it is to be a child, and that's what it is to have ears to hear. God, I trust you. Whatever you want to do and however you want to move, I just want to obey. No matter the cost, I just want to follow you. I want to talk about another man with leprosy. We're going to take a look at Naaman. 
So 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10 through 14. Could I have my Manny? Can you read it for us? Yeah. Nice and loud. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. And not Abana and far far the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Let's stop there for a minute. Let's go back. So here's Elijah, and here's this guy named Naaman, right? Naaman has leprosy. Are you guys following what's happening? Naaman, having leprosy, goes to the prophet and asks Elisha, will you pray for me? And so Elisha says, go wash. Go wash yourself in that river seven times, and then walks away from him. What does Naaman respond? What was his response to what was said to him? Like, what the heck? I thought I was coming to a prophet. I thought he was going to do this wavy, wavy, wavy thing, and then I was going to see leprosy fall off. Like, you know? Like, what the heck? What do you mean go wash? Like, why am I washing in this dirty river? Like, there's a cleaner river over there, right? Have you guys ever responded in that way? Come on, be honest. You know, a prophet comes to you and says, you ought to jump this way. Or Mishi's like, go dance. And you're all like, hmm. Why I gotta dance? I don't know why I have to dance. I don't get it, right? And you grumble, grumble, grumble. And what happens? He turns to anger, he turns to rage. And he almost missed his moment of encounter and healing because of pride. He closed up his ears because he, he didn't like what the prophet was telling him to do. He thought in his own mind that this is foolish, right? Are you guys seeing it? He's like, this is foolish. What does washing in a river seven times do for me? If you've lived your whole life with a skin disease like leprosy, washing in a dirty river does not make sense, right? If anything, I'm going to get more bacterial diseases if I get in that river, right? So it seems like to the natural mind, offensive, offensive what God is speaking. But thank God for a servant. So let's go to the next verse. I'm going to have our brother Ray finish it. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, is it, it is a great word that the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Amen. Amen. Thank God that there was a servant who had ears to hear that was around him. Right? With such sweet humility. Father, don't you see? Didn't you hear? The greatest thing was just said to you. Someone with ears to hear heard it grabbed a hold of the word of the promise. You're going to be clean if you would just wash yourself. Why not do it? Why not say yes? This beautiful childlike heart of response. If God said he's going to do it, then why not just do it? Just trust him. If you were here the last few prayer meetings, you would have met an incredibly beautiful, precious young one named Annie. How many you guys know who Annie is? So we've gotten to testify the last couple weeks. Um, so during our January outreach with the youth, we had a whole program set up. We had prayed the week before. We had received of the Lord. And we had a pray program that we've set up with games, activities, a message. We knew what we were going to do, right? We even literally moved all the chairs into the lobby, like ready to do our game. But when we came to pray that afternoon, we were asking the Lord, what does he want to do? The Lord said he wanted to release healing. He wanted to release healing in a powerful way. 
Now we had a moment to decide, do we want to go with our plan that we had prepared with, or do we want to trust God? And I am so thankful that we've been cultivating learning to listen and learning to obey, that we all just agreed really quickly. We were like, we're just going to trust God. Who cares about hungry hippos? Like, if God's going to show up to heal, I want to see him heal. Can I get an amen, somebody? Like, forget about the plans. Like, if he's going to heal people, let's go for it. And so we went for it. So Chris began sharing his testimony. And right after his testimony, the Lord said, just go after it. And I love it. Like, Matthew messaged me. He said, I have faith that Hadassah and Ray are going to be healed. There's another Ray who came in with a boot. And Hadassah had sprained her ankle that week at soccer. And she was at a level nine pain. And the Lord had us praying for her. As we were praying for Hadassah, and you guys got to hear the testimony this past month, it went from nine to seven, and then it stopped. We were praying for a while, and it stayed at seven. And then the Lord said to me, just offer her ankle to me. So I did. I literally took her foot in my hand, and I just cradled it. And that's all I did. I said, Lord, this is your ankle. You heal it. I'm just going to hold her foot. And then I looked at her. I was like, Hadassah? What do you feel? <laughs> With my weak and little faith, like, what do you feel? <laughs> I feel her ankle in my hand. That's all I feel right now. I don't feel like this crazy fire. I don't feel anything. But the Lord said, offer the ankle, so I'm doing it. I was like, how do you feel? She was like, I feel nothing. <laughs> and I, I, we all got scared for a moment. All of us who were around her was like, what do you mean she feels nothing? Like, did we, did we pray the wrong way? <laughs> Is she all numb? But she started crying and bawling. She got up of her foot. She she ripped off those bandages and she started walking around and like testing it out. And the next thing I know, she's jumping and dancing and crying and weeping. The Lord completely healed her from a level nine pain, sprayed ankle, couldn't walk like without limping to zero pain. And she was dancing. Can I get a hallelujah? Come on. And it was just the beginning. It was just the beginning. After she got healed, Ray got healed, another young man who had never received Jesus before, never experienced the presence of God, this precious, precious young man, JC, he felt God. His initials are Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> so he literally felt God for the first time. And his shoulder injury of like years of just popping and pain, all of a sudden supernaturally healed. And then the Lord highlighted Shani. And we did not know that like a week prior, Shani's sister, Annie, had been rushed to the emergency room. She had been diagnosed with lupus three years ago, and she would battle through these terrible bouts where all of a sudden her immune system is attacking her whole body, and she's just in severe pain. What happened two weeks ago, she could not even get out of bed. She was in so much pain. They took her to the hospital. We didn't know, but we just were just following the Lord. We, pray, we were praying for Shani on behalf of Annie. And then the next day, they brought Annie. She was sitting right there, right outside this room. She couldn't even lift up her head. She was in so much pain. She was so tired. Her body was, in, was like just rot. Like you could just see her. She was like this in, in a wheelchair. And then I heard the voice of the Lord say, your lobby is going to be filled with wheelchairs. Do you believe me? I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes. I've seen enough that I, I can't doubt that he can do that. Amen? But he's looking for ears that will listen and a heart that would respond. So I just prayed in faith. I told Annie, you're not going to stay in this chair. You're going to return your chair. Amen? She said, in a very weak way, she said, amen. And the next day she came to prayer meeting, we prayed over her. her. That morning, she went from a level 10 pain to a level 4. Level 4. But she was still in a wheelchair, unable to get out of the chair herself. We had to lift her. Me and Alvin literally are lifting her and walking with her. But she had so much faith. She said, Lord is going to do it. The next day, she ended up going back to the hospital. It ended up getting worse. Can you imagine? But I said, no, Lord, you said wheelchairs out in that lobby. I believe your word. And we're going to continue to contend. And then that Friday, Matthew gets a song. The way you came in is not the way you're going to go out. And that very moment, 
Annie walked in, not in a wheelchair, but with crutches. And she said, this morning I woke up, the presence of God hit me, and I can walk. Can I get an amen, somebody? Hallelujah. It didn't stop there, though. By the end, as we were wrapping up that worship night, she was able to actually rock and dance, just like this, really simply. And she walked out of here with no crutches. She walked out all on her own. Fast forward to yesterday. Who was here and saw Annie doing cartwheels around the room, somebody? Hallelujah. She went from wheelchair to crutches to cartwheels in like less than three weeks. Only the Lord can do that. Amen? And I believe it's just the beginning. Annie is a picture of what God wants to do more. But do you guys have ears to hear and a heart that would believe? Amen? The Lord said, just trust me that the wheelchairs are going to be left out. Would you trust him at his word? Or would you miss the healing that he wants to release? But thank God. Thank God God has put us in a community of people that are learning to listen. Amen? Thank you, your neighbor, that you get to do this with them. Come on. Say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for your ears. I need your ears to help me to listen. I need your ears to help me to listen. Amen. We all need ears to help us to listen because he's doing a new thing. Amen? What I believe the Lord is going to do in this new year is beyond anything we could have thought or dreamt. That's why we have to continue to go lower, to be childlike, to trust him. Whatever he wants to do, we're willing to say yes, that we have ears that can hear. Now here's a test of whether or not you can have ears to hear. Ask the people around you, do I have ears that can hear? I'm not just talking about the people here, but the people you do every day with. Like, what would mom say about my ability to hear? Right? What would my wife or husband say about my ability to hear, dear husband? <laughs> can I hear? Or what would my spiritual mother say about my ability to hear? Those are the ones that will really tell you whether or not you're listening. Can I get an amen? If we're trying to really cultivate ears to hear, we have to be willing to allow people to speak into us. How many of you guys remember what was the assignment last Sunday? And more than remember what the assignment was, but actually did it. What was the assignment? What was the assignment, Emma? It was to ask a leader or a f and a friend what, you sh what we should like, improve on, and we were supposed to act upon it. And, like, Amen. And I know Emma knows this because she asked me. And I'm still praying. I'm sorry, Emma. I'm still praying. I'm asking the Lord. I don't want to just tell you. But she asked me immediately after service. She asked me. And then that afternoon, she followed up with a text message. That's acting upon it. Amen? She asked me again, Mishi, please tell me. There's an area in my life I need to improve. Like, I want to I wanna know. Those are some ears I can hear. Can I get an amen? So... Following up with this week, I think a great way, a great challenge, a great assignment is to ask the ones around you, do I have ears to hear? Am I somebody that's able to listen? Another test is how do you respond to when people do correct you? How do you respond? When someone comes to you and says, you really need to work on this, do you respond with like, yeah, you know, I'm working on it. Like, I really try not to procrastinate. Like, I am working on it. Or I'm trying to be more bold in my workplace. I am speaking up more, right? Like, I just, I just am not given the opportunity to, right? Like, there are people, coworkers, they're way louder than me. So, like, it's not my fault. Any of you guys say that? Anyone got some excuses? I think that is our flesh, 
right? And the sneaky way of pride that comes out. When we have excuses to the corrections that are spoken over our life, that is impacting our ability to hear. Amen? Because the moment I put in a, an excuse to when someone corrects me, that's me saying, again, I don't need those things. I can do this better on my own. And that's our pride laying hold of our heart. Let's take a look at Ephesians 4.15, and then we're going to wrap up here. Have you guys have ever heard Ephesians 4.15? Let's read it together. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Now, I think many people hear this and they interpret it wrongly. What do I mean by that? The way that the Paul was saying as an apostle, the way that we ought to speak to each other, how do we speak to each other? In love, yeah. So when we're going to correct, we're going to do it out of a place of love. Not because I'm trying to compare you or cut you down. I'm not trying to be critical, like having a critical spirit, because that's the spirit of the accuser, right, when I criticize others. But in love, because I love you, I'm willing to speak the truth into your life. That is correct. But many people also interpret it as, if the people around me doesn't say it in love to me, then I don't have to listen. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, when mom was really frustrated, she said all these things, like, I need to do X, Y, Z. But because she said it, she was angry, I get to nullify what she said. Any of you guys have done that? Yes? Or my husband, he was frustrated. He was angry when he said those things. Like we were in the car and like I, I was correcting him too much on his driving. And then when he said I am too bossy, it was because he was frustrated. So I don't have to listen. You guys ever say that? Again, these are excuses, right? Or when you're in a conversation with your friend, you get into an argument, you're talking about, I don't know, apologetics and saying, no, I think it should be this way or that way. And then they correct you and say, hey, does it really matter? Well, they were just frustrated. We make these excuses to close up our ears. Are you guys following me? And we interpret because it wasn't said to us out of our interpretation of how love looks like, then I don't have to receive it. But that's actually not true. Jesus said, who do we have to be like? Like a child. And all throughout the Bible, you see the Lord will use anything and everything to speak to us. Amen? I mean, he used a donkey, right? If he can use a donkey, he could use a frustrated spouse. If he could use a donkey, he could use a frustrated boss, right? He could use a tired parent. He could use anyone, amen, in any circumstance, in any situation. The question is, do I have ears that can hear? Ask your neighbor again, do I have ears that can hear? If we really want to walk in humility, we have to cultivate ears that can hear. And how do we do that? We can't give ourselves any more excuses. Amen? Because he's speaking. He's speaking so loud. The question is, are we listening? So I invite the worship team to come. I don't want to be like Naaman. Because of my pride because of my lack of hearing, because the Lord says something that I don't understand or I don't necessarily agree with, that I'm going to miss what God's doing. I think we're just going to have just a few. Is that okay? Sorry about this. You guys come back. You guys can stay. You guys can stay. I just want you to have time to spend with the Lord to respond. Amen? 
Lord, do I really have ears to hear? Am I like a child? Am I like a child? Or am I a person like Naaman, full of pride? Because you said something that I don't understand. I just dismiss your voice. I dismiss your promise for healing. I judge what you say because it doesn't make sense in my mind. Lord, I want to have a heart like a child. I want to have ears that can hear you and a heart that can respond. I invite you to spend some time, talk to the Lord, ask him, Lord, am I one that listens, truly listens like a child? Lord, examine me. Examine me, Lord. Lord, you know my weak frame. You know me better than I know myself. You know how easy it is for me to excuse to diminish your voice, to stop listening. Lord, forgive me for when you've used others around me to speak to me, but I'm not listening. Lord, I ask you to tenderize my heart. Make me tender like a child again. I want to be able to listen. I want to be able to listen. the Holy Spirit Lord show me a time where you were trying to speak to me but I wasn't listening remind me of a time maybe you're speaking to me through my boss through their corrections through their through their responses but I wasn't listening because I didn't like it I didn't like what they were saying Lord show me a time maybe you're speaking to me through my mom or through my dad. I didn't like what they had to say and I wasn't listening. Just ask the Holy Spirit to remind you. a specific person but it's a circumstance there's situations just like Joseph the Lord has allowed in your life to test you to speak to you through them I ask the Lord Lord what are you saying to me now through my circumstances that I'm in right now maybe you're going through a difficulty you don't know where your next step is going to come, whether it be in your career or even being able to have enough. Just like Jonathan, you find yourself at the end. Ask the Lord, what are you trying to speak to me through my circumstance? I want to trust you. I want to learn to trust you, to listen, to respond.
two by two, me guys and guys and girls with girls, just saying, praying over each other. We want to have ears to be able to hear. We want to have ears that are responsive to him. So go ahead and find someone in the room, two by two, three by three. If your family's here, go with your family. If not, just finding two or three others, your spiritual family in the room, just to pray for each other. Lord, in this season, in this new season, Lord, we want to cultivate ears to be able to hear. So, Lord, would you help us? Leaders in the room, help help me out. If you see someone on their own, just being able to gather together, just praying for each other. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you through your circumstance, just like Joseph. Maybe the Lord has put people in your life to speak to you to return like a child, to restore that childlike faith and simplicity, just being able to pray for each other. Lord, help us to have ears, 
Help us to have ears that are responsive to you. Go ahead, pray for each other. And if there's a specific situation, scenario, where you're finding it difficult to hear him, difficult to hear his voice, difficult to hear or to understand what God's doing, you can pray for each other for that situation, whether it be their family situation, relationships, or whether it be a difficulty in the workplace, just being able to pray for each other. Lord, I pray for my brother's ears to hear you open up, even if it doesn't make sense to them. Maybe it's, it sounds completely beyond our understanding why you would instruct them to do this or that, but we're going to trust you. We want to learn to trust you like a child. Go ahead, pray for each other. Restore our ears, Lord. Just me and you. Just a heart song singing out of tune. I remember the simplicity just to feel you everything stunned by your beauty this is my offering not for anything that I could gain just to honor you and bring you praise like a fragrance broken on the floor may my worship be pure there's no motive there's no hidden catch here's my all and I don't Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be pure Find me like a child again Full of wonder, full of For anything got in the way, any dream or any accolade, you make it easy, easy to bring me. Not for anything that I could gain Just to honor you and bring you praise Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be pure There's no motive, there's no hidden catch Here's my all and I don't want it back Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be Not for anything that I could gain Just to honor you and bring you praise Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be pure There's no motive, there's no hidden catch Here's my all and I don't want it back 
like a fragrance broken on the floor. May my worship be pure. If you're still praying for each other, you can continue to pray for one another. Just Lord, help us in every situation, every circumstance to have ears that are able to hear. If that person is a family member who's been speaking to you, thank them. Lord, thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for my mom, for my dad, that you've given them into my life, that they'd be able to speak to me, God. I want to have ears that can hear you through them, that I can have a heart responsive and tender, no matter what they say or how they say, that I can be like a child to receive it with love, to receive their love, to receive your love through their words. Thank you, Lord. We pray for each other's circumstances. Lord, thank you for the difficulties we're facing right now, for the valleys in our life. God, that you're training us. You are training us to listen. You're teaching us to listen. Lord, help us to be more childlike in responding to you through the situations you put in our life. Whether it's difficulty in the workplace, whether it's a difficult relationship, just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for those difficulties. Jesus, thank you. I just trust your leadership. I trust you are the good shepherd that's going to carry me through. I trust that through this situation, you want to make me more and more tender, more responsive to your leadership and to your voice. I want to be one that hears you and is able to respond. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even ask the Lord in this new month of February, what are you speaking, Lord? What are you doing? What is the new thing that you are doing? Here I am, your servant. I'm listening. Just like Samuel at a young age, the Lord spoke to him, called him out. Samuel, Samuel. Lord, thank you. You're speaking to us. You're calling us by name. Lord, we won't look down on ourselves because we're young. We know that, Lord, you are setting us apart. Give me ears to hear you in this season that I can respond to you. Thank you, Jesus. having ears to hear in this new season I'm just going to invite you guys to pray if you want to the mic will be here I might go around and pass it to some groups if you want to pass it along you can pass it along just pass it yes Lord just pray that you can really give me an ear that can hear oh God in this transitional season for me myself oh God I really need an ear that can hear more than ever Oh God, even though it might not making sense, oh God, or whatever thing, oh God, just forgive me, forgive me for my little faith that is really complicating your words, oh God. Give me this simple heart, a childlike heart, that whatever I hear, I will just act upon it, oh God. Your words is simple, your truth is simple, oh God. Help me to be simple in trusting and listening as well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Lord, I believe if you can speak through a donkey, you can speak through those people uh, that you've placed in my life, Lord God. You have words of wisdom to impart into me. So, Lord, I ask you for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation. Open my ears, open my eyes to see, to hear, to receive, Lord, from the wisdom of, of those that you've placed around me. In Jesus' name. God, pray that everybody will have ears and will hear. Amen. Uh, God, I pray for everybody in this world that we will have uh, ears to hear your voice and not the world. In Jesus' name, amen. God, I pray, God, I pray that um, we'll have ears to hear and we won't get annoyed with our parents when they tell us to do something or they tell us to say, to, to say something, and we'll have it to see, and we'll have it to see, and won't let our pride take over us. We just going to pray in that. God, I pray that we can be humble and fully dependent on you.
just ask that um, you could guide me to have more consciousness and to lower my pride because um, not everything that I do is perfect and that um, there's no harm in taking other people's advice, God. Um, I just pray that I can, um, I won't take any um, like criticism personally and I just pray. I'm going to ask Chuping and Stephen if they can close in prayer over us. Go ahead. Oh, just Holy Spirit, um, I just thank you uh, how you just lead us and watch over us. And I just thank you for this timely message uh, that speaks to our hearts. Uh, just to just become childlike before you, Jesus. Oh, you just show the heart of the Father um, best. And more and more, I know you, Father. I want to be like Jesus, your Son, and say, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, dearest Father. I want to know you. I want you to work through me. Oh, Lord, and just thank you for all the confessions and all the sincerity that people poured out that they really want to be transformed and changed by you. And I just thank you for this body of Christ here. May everybody be here and come back different from just even a moment ago, that you would just reveal more of your light within them and there would be more hope and more desire for transformation, that even all of us, uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, that Jesus, just like you said, get up and walk, and just like you did to the, uh, to the, the man by the pool, uh, Lord, we can, and just like you did to that young girl, the testimony, Annie, oh, Lord, may we all learn and get up and walk in you. I thank you for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.